Good morning, North Rocks. Thanks for joining us today as we worship in a different way. We pray that you're keeping well and keeping safe and that today as we join you online, we can all feel connected to each other and to God. Tony and I are going to play The Heavens Shall Declare and we hope that you can sing along at home. Thank you. Good morning. When Razan and I put our names down on the duty roster, which was way back in January, we never imagined that it would have to be done by remote uh, audio under the circumstances that we now face. I'd imagined that a fairly standard prayer for others, thanking God for the beauty of our autumn weather, recovery from bushfires and special prayers for those in our congregation who are ill. I could not conceive that the world we now face has changed so much in the last months, weeks and even days. I confess that the crisis we now all face has taken me by surprise, but has also shaken me and driven me to remember, to remember that in all this insecurity, we can hold on to one great certainty, that God is here with us, walking alongside us, and that God loves us beyond our own understanding. For who can imagine a love so great that he would send his only son to die, to die on a cross, to save us. That very same God is with us now. So let us bow our heads and bring our prayers for others to God now. We pray for this beautiful, broken, frightened world, and especially for doctors, health workers and researchers all over the world who are often ignoring the danger to themselves, tending the sick and dying, or working night and day to find a cure. Pour out on them a measure of your strength, peace and wisdom 
as they go about their life-saving tasks. We pray for our leaders, that they may have the courage and wisdom to make difficult decisions at this time. Grant them insight and let their counsellors and advisors give them good and fearless advice to help them make the right decisions. We pray for our own beautiful sunburnt land, Australia, and pray that this crisis will bond our people together, strengthen our courage, wisdom, empathy, and teach us to care more greatly for the vulnerable. We pray for those who are afraid, that your peace may descend on them and bring them a spirit of calm and courage. For your word indeed says that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We pray for our families and our friends, and we pray, Lord, that we may all safely weather the storm that faces us. We pray for our own church congregation, and that we look forward to the day in the not too distant future, we hope, where we may once again meet in our church and fellowship together. We pray especially for those in our congregation who are ill, in distress, or in need of a special measure of your spirit now. We pause as we bring each one of them before you now. We pray especially for our minister, Steve, for wisdom and courage at this time as he seeks to minister your word through these dark days. Let us conclude by praying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Today's Bible reading is from John 11, 17 to 25, 32 to 44. Jesus comforts the sisters of Lazarus. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man had kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odour, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. 
The Lord be with you. Welcome to this beautiful Sunday morning here at North Rocks Community Church. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ fill our hearts and minds in our worship service today. And I'd like to extend my warm welcome to all of you, especially those who might be watching our YouTube channel in Australia and from all over the world. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. There's not any single person in the whole world who has not been affected by this COVID-19 coronavirus. And we have never experienced this size of global pandemic in human history. And from a newborn baby to the elderly, regardless of who you are, where you are, what you are doing, this virus has completely changed the way we live, the way we think, the way we work, and the way we worship. And it will continue to change our lives, for sure. While having online meetings and online prayer gatherings or making phone calls during the week, one thought kept recurring to me at the back of my mind. Does this work? Does this really work in the same way that we do it in our face-to-face gatherings? Does this bring the same weight and carry the same emotions and feelings as in indoor meetings or gatherings? Not for a short time, but for a long, indefinite period. Perhaps some of you are watching online might have thought about this phenomenon and how much it would affect our spiritual life, our corporate worship, prayer, fellowship, spiritual growth, etc. In Matthew 18, 20, Jesus said, Where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. Where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. When Jesus spoke these words to his disciples, the context he was referring to would have been an indoor setting where close contact with people usually happens. But would his promise apply to online space and online gatherings like this? Would online worship still touch our hearts and minds? Would we still be able to serve God's kingdom through social media? What do you think? Yes, I believe so. Because God is alive. Because the Spirit of the Lord is moving, and because of the Spirit of the Lord is helping us to bring our hearts and minds and prayers to the Father God, and binding us together as God's family, even stronger in fellowship, through the written or spoken words or videos we share in an open space, an online space. So friends, I'd like to encourage all of us to think about two or three people in our lives and organize a small group of people who can manage online or offline so that we might encourage each other to rely on God and support each other as much as we can in this difficult time. And it might be a great opportunity to start a family worship or house worship if you haven't tried it before. Spend 15 minutes or half an hour with your family in worship or in prayer. In prayer. And if you are living on your own, perhaps you can start with your close friends or neighbors. Make a phone call to them and ask them how they are doing. And you might like to ask them if they need help or a prayer. And you can keep contact, connection with them. Let us reflect on today's story. Jesus and Lazarus. Jesus and Lazarus, who was once dead, but raised from the dead. In the midst of the most difficult circumstance, Jesus chose to be with those who were going through the toughest time in their lives. And he went to the tomb where Lazarus' body had been laid for four days and raised him from the dead to bring glory to the God Father. Perhaps we might be able to apply our current context to the story. Firstly, the impact which Jesus' death, or Ledger's death, has brought to the family might be compared to the current corona situation that we are in. Sadness, frustration, depression, or anger. Because of all the uncertainty we face, and the heavy pressure most of us 
have to carry day to day, week by week, with no clear promise or bit of certainty all of us want to see in our future. And it has been already four days, according to the story, since Lazarus died. Four days after someone passed away would probably mean that there is no possibility or hope of coming back. Mary and Martha, Lazarus' sisters, must have been devastated by the passing of their young brother. They were struck by sadness and grief because of the memories they shared with them. Thinking about a life without him, who would have been a main bread earner for their household? When we think about the current situation that we are in, things don't look that different. Though the impact of the event might, event might be different, but we, the way we feel would be similar to what they would have felt. Four days, four weeks, four months, we don't know what's going to happen. And how much things might get worse or tougher in the near future. But let us remember, let us remember that our Lord Jesus Christ grieved with the family, as well as the whole town people, and stood right in front of the tomb where Jesus' ledger's body was laid. And he said at that devastating moment, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, come out. And he said to the family, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? And he didn't say, oh, don't worry, Mary and Martha. I will raise your brother back to life. I will look after you. I'll give you bread each day, I'll give you a job, something like that. But instead, he stood right in front of the tomb with them. The tomb which represents no future, no hope, and no life. And he said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. Whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? What the Lord wanted from the Lazarus family was their faith in him. Faith in him. Not someone or something else. So friends, everything is faith. Everything is faith. We believers live in faith, walk in faith, and rejoice in faith. Faith in the Lord makes us stand even stronger in times of trouble. Faith in our Lord Jesus Savior, Savior Christ, binds us even stronger, closer in times like this. And faith in the Lord helps us to see things as if the virus is already defeated, as if everything in our lives is back to normal. And as if we were standing with Jesus in front of the tomb where Lazarus was coming out from. So faith helps us see through this pandemic what lies ahead of us. And faith reminds us who is Lord over all this. So friends in Christ, we are the people of faith. The faith of the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. The one who creates the heavens and the earth. The one who knows our past, present, future. The one who is the author of our lives for each one of us. So till we see each other again, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all today and this week, wherever we are, in whatever circumstances. Amen.